My name's Gareth and I make videos helping people to get high scores in the IELTS test. In this video we're going to be looking at part three of the speaking test. Specifically we're going to be looking at one example question and a sample answer to that question. Now the sample answer is quite interesting and shows a high level of English that would get a high score in the IELTS speaking test. The topic of the question we're looking at is on teenagers and their parents. Now, this is a topic that has come up in the IELTS speaking test before, but really it's not the topic we need to be focusing on here. It's the style of question. The style of question we're going to see here is really very common. And the way that we answer it in the sample answer shows a really good way of structuring a nice clear answer that would get a high score. So let's have a look at the question. Here it is. What disagreements do teenagers often have with their parents? And why? So there's the question. Nothing too complex there, you would think. Really, it's asking you to give some examples of disagreements arguments that teenagers have with their parents. You can see there that we've got disagreements with a S on the end, it's plural. So really in the answer you're required to give more than one example of a disagreement. And also at the end of the question you can see the word why. Now the examiner would have to ask you why if you don't explain afterwards. But really your job is to explain those disagreements and why teenagers have them with their parents before the examiner really asks you to. But if you don't then the examiner will use that part of the question. So what we'll do now is have a look at the sample answer and afterwards I'll give a quick analysis of why it's a high level answer. So what disagreements do teenagers often have with their parents? Teenagers disagree with their parents about all sorts of things like the clothes they want to wear, whether they can go out with their friends, doing homework, and how much help they give their parents around the house. I think the teenage years are when we develop a sense of identity and we want to make our own decisions rather than follow other people's instructions. I remember having disagreements with my own parents, usually about simple things like getting up early in the morning, tidying my room, or doing the washing up. So there we go, that's the answer. Nothing too long, but also not too short as well. And we're focusing the whole time on the question. We're not going off topic there. You'll notice that there are actually three sentences in the answer, uh, which is not that many, but we can fully answer the question using just three sentences here. You'll notice actually we were using quite a specific structure here as well. The first sentence was just giving the basic answer or the direct answer to the question. We were giving some examples of disagreements there. Um, and then in the second sentence we explain why. We're explaining. And then the final sentence is giving a personal example from the speaker's teenage years. So it's a nice, clear and logical structure to answer this kind of question. It makes it quite easy to listen to and makes the opinion of the speaker very, very clear. If we just have a look at each of those sentences and maybe think about a bit of the vocabulary that would be quite impressive in this answer as well. So in the first sentence where we're giving a direct answer, you can see we've got teenagers disagree with their parents about all sorts of things. So straight away, we're giving a nice, clear, direct answer where we're taking words from the question. Um, but also we're changing the form of some words. In the question, it uses the word disagreement. Well, we're using the verb disagree instead of the noun disagreement there. Teenagers disagree with their parents. And then 
we just give a general answer saying all sorts of things. Then we go into a bit more detail. We list a few of the disagreements. So like the clothes they want to wear, whether they can go out with their friends, doing homework, and how much help they give their parents around the house. Nothing too complex with the vocabulary here really, but we're just using it well. We're fitting the right words together, we're not making any mistakes with the word choice there, and the grammar is fine. So that's the first sentence, nice direct answer, and really I guess you could stop your answer there, but it's not really explaining enough, and if you did stop there the examiner would probably say why. Um, but we've avoided that by explaining why in the answer. So if we look at that second sentence, we're explaining why. I think teenage years are when we develop a sense of identity <clears throat> and we want to make our own decisions rather than follow other people's instructions. So yeah, we're just explaining why there, nothing too complex. We're avoiding repeating the word teenager again. Uh, instead, we're using the adjective teenage and then the noun years, our teenage years. Um, but also we're using a nice idiomatic phrase there, developing a sense of identity. I mean, realizing who we are. Um, <clears throat> it's quite a nice phrase there, common phrase that native speakers use. And also we're using a nice collocation between make and decisions, to make our own decisions and follow instructions. We're understanding here the connection between verbs and nouns and kind of a good sense of collocation in English. So this is kind of showing a bit of a higher level of English and understanding vocabulary there. But again, this sentence is just explaining our direct answer in the first sentence. So the final sentence of the answer was giving a personal example and we can often do this in part three if we can think of something from the past in our own lives that we can give an example of then it's a good thing to do. Um, you can see here uh, the sentence I remember having disagreements with my own parents. So there we go, it's clear that it's a personal example there using the pronoun I. Then we give some examples, usually about simple things like getting up early in the morning, tidying my room or doing the washing up. So nothing too complex there but some good use of idiomatic vocabulary, getting up early, uh, <clears throat> kind of waking up in the morning, getting out of bed, but getting up, the phrasal verb there. We're also using a, the right form of verb there, using the gerund, verb ing, and then after that consistency, right, we've got tidying my room or doing the washing up. Again, doing the washing up, well, this means washing the dishes, but again, a nice bit of idiomatic vocabulary it doesn't seem that complex, but it does show a good understanding of how native speakers use vocabulary. Um, so there we go. That's the final sentence of the answer, and it's using a nice, clear, simple structure that you can use and adapt to other questions that you get in part three of the IELTS speaking test. We're giving a direct answer, followed by an explanation, followed by an example. And there we go, it's just three simple steps. And in this case, we've been able to answer it with three sentences. Of course, one of those steps could take more than one sentence. But in general, if we're kind of good at explaining things and can get directly straight to the point, then we can go through these three steps in just three sentences. And that's enough. You don't really need to do more than that to show some good speaking skills in part three. And it's enough to get a really good score. So there we go. That's it. Um, hopefully that's been helpful for you to see an example question and answer for part three of the art speaking test. If you have found it useful then don't forget to give the video a like and also if you don't want to miss out on similar videos on similar topics in the future then remember to subscribe to the channel. There we go. Thanks for watching and see you again in the next video.